Okay, now we uh, will hear from uh, Yayu Yan, uh, who is going to uh, tell us about quantum information in gravity, uh, holographic com complexity. Uh, Yayu, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Yayu Yang. I'm a second year master's student from Roman and Nia Shafield Research Group. And today I'll talk about a project with my undergraduate supervisor, Andrew Frey. It is a subfield of quantum information in gravity called holographic complexity. And this is based on our recent paper, Complexity Scaling and Phase Transition. Here. And uh, uh, this is our outline. First, I will provide you with some background information, like the concept of complexity and also the idea of safety correspondence. And then I will talk about the holographic complexity proposals. And, uh, and I will give you an introduction to the magnetized idea soliton. And then we will evaluate the holographic complexity for three different proposals. And then finally, I will make a conclusion. First, let's begin with complexity. You might ask this question, what is complexity? Uh, it is similar to ask how hard it is to do a task or how many steps you need to solve a problem. And in quantum circuit model, quantum complexity is defined as a minimum number of quantum gates that you need to reach a target state from our reference state. Here, psi is our target state. Oh, sorry. Uh, here, psi is our target state, and psi naught is our reference state. And the minimum number of quantum gates, the minimum number of Gs here, are the complexity. And uh, what is ADSFT correspondence? ADS is the uh, anti space spacetime. It is a spacetime that has lective cosmological constant. And uh, in point -co coordinates, this is a metric for the anti space spacetime. And uh, here, R is a radio direction, X, X is a spatial direction, and T is a time direction. And uh, when R approaches infinity, it is our boundary of the ADS. And the uh, conformal field theory is, ju is just a particular quantum field theory that is invariant under conformal transformation. And uh, what is ADS safety correspondence? In, uh, the ADS safety correspondence was first proposed by Marcena in 1997. The basic idea of the ADS safety correspondence is that there is a gravitational theory in d plus one dimension and uh, living in the bulk, and uh, there is a conformal field theory in d dimension living on the boundary, and uh, there is a duality, or say there is a correspondence between the two theory. And the quantities that can be computed in the one theory that can also be computed in the dual theory. Like a famous example of this ADS safety correspondence is the holographic entanglement entropy, uh, saying that the entanglement entropy of a subsystem living on the boundary is dual to the area of some extremal surface in the bulk. And but here, I want to say that the entanglement entropy is not enough. Uh, this idea was first proposed by by Seska in 2014. Um, he considers a uh, two-sided uh, uh, ADS black holes, and uh, at the time equals zero, the two horizons of the, the, the two horizons uh, meet together at time equals zero, and the volume of this and the volume of this wormhole or the volume of the black hole interior is zero. And as time goes by, as we can see, the volume of the wormhole or the volume of the black hole interior grows. And uh, it will grow linearly with time, and the growth rate is, is exactly proportional to this area or the area of the event horizon. And, uh, but we can also know that the black hole entropy uh, becomes a constant at a very, uh, very quickly, and uh, the entropy is saturated. So we need something else to capture the growing geometry of the wormhole. So that can propose that the, the thing that we need is complexity. So this is our motivation for the holographic complexity. This is the argument that the volume of the black hole interior grows linearly with time. And also, the complexity of states also grow, grow linearly with time. So we have the complexity is proportional to some volume. And here, G Newton L is just uh, something that we added to make this formula dimensionless on the right-hand side. And the concrete statement is that the complexity of the boundary safety state is proportional to the volume of the maximum volume size. And here are some steps to help us evaluate the complexity using the complexity equals volume conjecture. First, we need to choose a time size sigma on the boundary. 
And the next, we consider all the, hyper, all the space like hypersurfaces B that's anchored on this boundary sigma. And then we vary these uh, hypersurfaces to find the one that has a maximal value. So we can uh, use uh, this maximal value to compute the holographic complexity using this formula. But as we can see in this formula, uh, L is some arbitrary length scale, so it is a little bit ambiguous. And uh, why can we use this arbitrary length scale here? So to avoid this ambiguity, uh, another proposal was proposed. It is complexity equals action conjecture. It is saying it is say that uh, the complexity of the boundary safety state is proportional to the action of the wheeler weight patch. And the wheeler weight patch is just uh, the union of all the uh, space-like hypersurfaces that we considered before. So the boundary of this wheeler weight patch is just the non-boundaries. So this whole range is our wheeler weight patch. And uh, the conjecture says that the complexity should be proportional to the action of this region. And here, uh, action, the dimension of action is h bar, so we can make this thing dimensionless without introducing an uh, arbitrary length scale L. And here are some steps to help us to evaluate the complexity equals action conjecture. First, we need to choose the time slice sigma, and then we consider the union of all the space like surfaces, and we compute the action of this range so we can find the complexity. And uh, there are another proposal called uh, complexity equals volume volume one. It is just uh, that we uh, consider the space-time volume of the weighted weight patch. And now let's move on to the magnetized ADS soliton. In our paper, we investigate the holographic complexity uh, of the CFTs compactified on a circle. And, uh, the, and the, the periodicity of this circle is called delta phi. And uh, there is a Wilson line around this circle. And uh, as we can see, uh, as we can see, as R decreases, uh, the, this, uh, the proper size of this phi circle will get smaller and smaller. And when R approaches R0, uh, the circle vanishes. And to avoid a, a colical singularity here, we need, we need, the, uh, we need the, the phi has a periodicity called delta phi. And uh, let's make a comparison between the ADS soliton metric and uh, the periodic ADS metric. As we can see, when we let the f of r equals one and r naught equals zero, we can reduce it to the, period, period, uh, to the periodic ADS case. And, uh, the, ADS has the, and the ADS soliton has a, a cigar-like geometry without horizon, and the ADS is a cylinder-like geometry with a horizon. And now let's uh, evaluate the complexity using the three different proposals. Uh, for the CV conjecture, the volume of the maximal volume slice is just this integral. It's very easy. And um, um, as we can see, when R0 equals 0, it is an ADS case. And, uh, but here is a problem. There is a divergence uh, in this formula. Rm uh, will approach infinity. So in order to cancel this divergence, we introduce the complexity of formation. It is just the complexity of the magnetized ADS soliton minus the uh, corresponding complexity of the ADS. So our complexity is just proportional to this part. It's proportional to R0 to D minus 1. And as we know, R0 is proportional to 1 over delta phi. So we can get that uh, the complexity is proportional to 1 over delta phi to D minus 1. And if we plot this uh, complexity, we can we can get this diagram. It is a function of the Wilson line. And, and, and when we increase the Wilson line, we will find that there is a phase transition from this ADS soliton to the ADS case. And uh, for the CV version 2 and the CA conjecture, we need to find our weight weight patch. And uh, this diagram and this diagram shows the shape of our future niches, this area. And uh, we can also have a past uh, light shades. So this, uh, this figure helps us to, to define our weight with patch. And uh, so if we have a space-time volume in this region, we can compute this integral. And if we plotted this uh, CV version 2 versus the Wilson line, we can get that the ADS soliton also scales as 1 over delta phi to d minus 1. And there is a phase transition at this point 
from this ADS soliton to the ADS case. And for the CA conjecture, it is, it is a little bit complicated, but we just need to evaluate the action of this very weight path region. Uh, it has a bulk action and also the boundary action for these non boundaries. And uh, there is also a joint action term for the joint is just the intersections of our non boundaries. And if we plot the CA versus the uh, the the magnetic flux, or say the Wilson line, we can also observe the phase transition from the ADS soliton to the ADS. And uh, here are just uh, the, all the proposals that I put together in one slide. As we can see, uh, they have the same scaling behavior and uh, they have the same phase transition behavior. So in conclusion, uh, we evaluated the holographic complexity for CFTs and uh, compactified on a circle with a Wilson line. And uh, for all the uh, three different proposals, we find the same scaling behavior and the same phase transition behavior. So these are the common features that they all share. That's all, thank you. Yeah, that's a very good. Um, like, uh, that's a very good question. Basically. And uh, the motivation for introduce uh, the magnetic flux is just that we want some parameter uh, to help us observe the phase transition. Like if we want to investigate the phase transition of the space time, we need some parameters. So here we just uh, choose this magnetic flux. And uh, if we vary the magnetic flux, we can uh, ob observe a phase transition between the two different uh, space times. So this is the, our motivation. Yeah, maybe th there are some other methods to check, uh, but we just uh, choose this method to work on. So, um, yeah. yeah, that's the night we talked about this, right? Yeah, thank you. Um, so, if you have other methods except for phase transition, do you have any idea of how to check the Yeah, right. Um,
okay, in our paper, we just say that for the three different proposals, uh, they can all be the candidates for complexity. So basically, we find the common feature that they all share. And there is also another paper uh, called Complexity Equals Anything. So, so, so in my opinion, complexity is not uh, that we find which one is correct, but uh, there are uh, a bunch of definitions, a bunch of complexity that can be the candidates to capture the geometry of the wormhole. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yes, that can consider a two-sided ADS black hole. And uh, at time equal zero, the two horizons meet together, right? So the volume of this wormhole is just zero. But as time goes by, the volume of this, uh, the volume in between these two horizons will grow. And, uh, but uh, entropy is always a constant. Entropy is just uh, the area of the event horizon. And uh, so that means that the, uh, for this case, the black hole becomes a thermal equilibrium very quickly and has a constant entropy, but the wormhole is still growing. So we need something else to capture, to describe the growing geometry of the wormhole. So what, what something else is still growing at late times. So complexity is a thing to capture this growing geometry. It is still growing at late times. Yeah, thank you.